We're still in the same day! Nahida, you already knew last night that we didn't break out of the Simsara? Why didn't you tell us? <laughs> Would there have been a point? You that spent the night with new worries, with tomorrow still out of reach. In that case, you might as well rest within that brief moment of hope. An opportunity like that doesn't come by often, and I thought it might help you clear your minds. I'm a that the doop doop did that! Oh, whatever. Guess you were looking out for us after all. <laughs> of course. In the time we've been together, you two have been everything to me. Flattered and everything, but maybe you're taking things a little fast. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, even though I had asked you to solve this puzzle, you two are still the only ones who can see me and sense my presence. In other words, if you weren't here, I may as well not exist. That's why you two have been everything to me. Get it? Nahira's talking about confusing stuff again. Anyway, that's enough chit chat. So, Traveler, did the new clues yesterday help you gain a new understanding of the situation? Huh? Why are you scrapping your previous theory? Oh, yeah! You're right! Gosh, how did we not notice that? In a simple time loop, people's physical conditions should also reset. So, what's your new hypothesis? Mercenaries rely heavily on muscle memory. And... Dia was able to use her experiences to avoid injury in later samsara cycles. If all our memories of a day are erased at the end of that day, then we would unwittingly relive that same day again and again. <sighs> oh! Then the beep we hear every night could just be indicating the deletion of our memories! That's why when we wake up, everyone thinks the sub -Zero's festival hasn't happened yet! It's already the next day, but everyone still thinks it's the day before! But muscle memory can't be erased! That's why Dia has been getting better at using her great sword. Now everything makes sense! Hmm, a brilliant deduction. Nahida, tell us if we're right or wrong! To put it simply, it's as if you've mistaken a pyro crystal fly for a firefly in the night. You lost sight of its true nature because you focus too much on your perception that it glows. That isn't simple at all! Why don't you go talk to Miss Dia again? You might learn something new. Right! She did help us find our latest clue after all. Let's go! <laughs> We don't have many more festivals to waste. Hurry and find the truth! There you are. Really took me a while to find you. As expected, Dia also didn't get hurt today! Get hurt? Why would I? Don't underestimate me. Well, you're still getting used to your new greatsword! Huh. Truth be told, I also think it's pretty strange. It just suddenly felt so familiar in my hands and... Uh, wait a second! How did you know I got a new greatsword to begin with? I didn't tell anyone about it. Traveler, could you explain the situation to her today? Paimon's gotten a little sick of doing it. Oh, that works! What happened to you guys while I was gone? Did you get brainwashed by some cult? Think too hard about it. Just take what we're saying at face value. All right then. Let me get this straight. You're telling me that my body's already gotten used to this great sword, but my brain just doesn't remember it. Yes, your memory is being erased every day. Then I'd have to disagree. That's impossible. Oh? Why do you think that? 
If we've actually been reliving the Subzerus festival day after day, then what happened to the things we used, the money we spent, the food we ate? Common sense says my wallet should have emptied itself a long time ago. There's no way I wouldn't have noticed that. They could use the Akasha to record what everyone did that day, and then use the city's resources to replenish everything! It's not very likely, but it's also not impossible. No, it is impossible. I've got proof. You have proof? Where? <sighs> you two are surprisingly serious about this nonsensical discussion. Fine, I'll play along for a little longer. Come with me, Miss Dunyarzad. Please come along as well. I still can't guarantee that this area is safe. Paimon can't believe it's Dia who wants to show us something this time. Two days ago, we were the ones taking her to see Dunyarzad. This is it. Huh? This is the wooden training dummy. What about it? See those marks on the dummy? Those are the result of several days' worth of practice. Let's say the sages didn't replace it every day. Shouldn't it be hacked to pieces by now? That's true, but what if they did? Then the sages would have had to reproduce every mark I left during previous training sessions. I'm a professional fighter. My martial school has always emphasized the importance of refined control. The force angle and entry point of each strike is calculated and deliberate. That's why I remember every mark on the dummy, as well as my state of mind as I made each strike. It's just as they say, each swordsman has their own unique style, and even the same swordsman can't make the same cut twice. It would be impossible to copy these marks. Is it really impossible? <gasps> what if they use some fancy machine to carve every single mark? People often say that a camera's photo can never replace an artist's painting because the former has no spirit to it. The same thing applies here. At a mere glance, I can differentiate carved marks from the results of combat training. Whew, I hope that cleared things up for you. Hey, is this that new brain exercise game that's been super popular with the scholars lately? It's surprisingly fun. Anyway, it's getting late. I should escort Miss Dunyarzad to Nilu's stage. See you later. Welp, back to square one. Is our memory deletion theory also wrong? <sighs> but at least we've reached some other conclusions in the meantime. Yep, that's true. So, can we think of any new ideas right now? Strange? Paimon feels like everything's been strange lately. Huh? Leaving the city? You're right! It's really strange how we never thought of such a simple solution! Many things should become clear if we can confirm the flow of time outside of the city! Paimon can't believe it! Did we miss this because we're tunnel visioning too hard on our other theories? Or because we're just too tired? How about we go back and ask Nahida? Maybe we've forgotten something about leaving the city. Nahida, we're back! You're back early today. Did you find something new? Sort of. We're mostly sure now that we're not in a time loop. And we also aren't in the real world. But at the same time, we have a new question. Hmm, leaving the city. As far as I remember, you've mentioned your plans to do that twice before. We did? But we don't remember anything. What happened after we talked about those plans? What did we say when we got back? <sighs> Let me think. I don't think you ever actually told me what the outcome was. Oh, it's probably more accurate to say that both times, you never came back the whole night. But you two sometimes stay out the entire night anyway, so at the time, I didn't think too much about it. It is true that sometimes we lose track of time during our investigations. Before we know it, it'll already be the next day. But still, 
Neither of us remember anything about leaving town. Really? That's kind of strange. In theory, I should have already awakened all your memories. Yep. Something here's definitely fishy. Let's get to the bottom of this tomorrow. Traveler, aside from your memories that were just restored, I have another message for you. Listen to it and you'll understand. Can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Sub-Zeru's festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. Traveler, you should be missing two days worth of memories. Paimon will fill you in. It's time to carry out our plan from yesterday! Okay, let's go! We don't have many more festivals to waste. Hurry and find the truth! Why can't we leave the city? What is the Academia up to now? Don't ask me, it's not like I can tell you anything. This is a direct order from the Grand Sage. Just wait until tomorrow. I have a real emergency. My goods have already arrived at Port Ormos. If I don't hurry, they'll be stolen. That's your problem. Make sure you make a request in advance next time. But, but it's not like you can just predict business matters in advance. <laughs> it looks like the Academia already announced a lockdown for Sumeru City today. How completely unsurprising. Let's go and question them. Hello, sir. Why can't we leave the city today? Here we go again. Don't ask me. I don't know either. We just received an order that no one is allowed to enter or exit Sumeru today. They didn't tell us anything else. <laughs> Angering me won't get you anywhere. If I had that kind of insider info, I would have left this stupid post long ago. He really doesn't know. If we can't get anything out of him, let's take matters into our own hands. Why don't we climb over the walls? Those guards can't be everywhere at once. This is a good spot, and the guard hasn't noticed us at all. Let's hurry! Huh? Why? Are you going to leave Paimon behind? But... What if things get really weird out there and you get into some trouble? Then, Paimon won't be able to help you. Oh, Paimon knows that Paimon can't do much, but we've always been together, haven't we? Mm. Okay, Paimon will wait for you. Promise Paimon that you'll come back as soon as possible. Just a quick look. And please, be careful. Hmm, 
see. Using two people's different perspectives. After that, you left the city. Paimon kept her eyes on you the whole time, but then you... disappeared in an instant. No way! Paimon was watching you with the fullest attention! What's your perspective, Traveler? You sure you don't have any memory of this? I guess that explains everything. You also lost your memories the last two times you tried to leave the city. Those days' memories can't be awoken. So, if we leave the city, our memories will be completely erased? It really sounds like something big outside of the city is being hidden on purpose. But this way, we'll also never discover what's outside! Something like... a message? But how can we send it back? D uh, don't look at me like that! I'm... I'm not used to being stared at. Well... Okay, okay. You want something that can pass on messages, right? Give me some time and take care of Dunyarzad for me. Yep! Now we're talking! Akasha terminals are already capable of sending messages. I just tweaked it so that it could connect to any node. To make something like this? Nahira, you really know the Akasha like the back of your hand! Anyway, we can use this now to record a message, right? Yep. <laughs> I'll help you save the messages. It should be pretty easy to use. I just can't guarantee the user's status and signal coverage when they're outside the city. We'll never know until we try! At least we're taking the initiative now! Let's go then! Let's expose those sages! Uh, Alright... Paimon isn't as worried about being separated since it happened once yesterday... But... Paimon still isn't happy about it! Okay! See you tomorrow, Traveler! That covers everything that's happened so far! <sighs> yes, although the signal was choppy and had some interference, we still managed to receive two messages from you when you were outside. Okay, now that you understand what's going on, let's hear the messages together! Can't go back! There are countless spaces here. Our Sub-Zeru's festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. I've entered another space. Before me are flowing sandstone and howling fish. Impossible and surreal sights. All these spaces are empty. Except for the occasional ones that contain mute puppets rather than people. I can't sense any human presence. It's one heck of an info dump! It sounds like you left the Sumeru city space when you set foot outside of the walls! But everything looked completely normal when Paimon was looking out from the inside! That's unbelievable. And if we take your word for it, the other spaces all had very weird contents. There's another part here. We only received it last night. <sighs> These spaces have been disappearing, one after the other. Absorbed by something like a sun in the sky. And now, even the final space has also disappeared. Behind me, a lot of spaces just appeared again from thin air. I get it now. Those spaces are actually... Uh, uh, what? 
did the message end right there? What did the Traveler want to say? What are those spaces? Probably because yesterday just happened to end at that moment. Oh, right. Paimon did hear a beep from the Akasha. Did it come from here or from the message? The message. It should have come from the Traveler's Akasha Terminal. After the beep, Traveler said, even the final space has also disappeared. <sighs> Traveler, what do you think that final space could have been? Was that space actually the real world? But wouldn't a real space just randomly disappearing like that be catastrophic? My impression is that each day in this samsara only ends at the sound of that beep from the Akasha. All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common. A lack of human presence. Oh, so that's what it is! After the sound of the beep, the final space... The sub -Zero's festival also disappears, and we're taken to the next day! Later on, Traveler also mentioned a bunch of new spaces materializing behind them! Do lots of new spaces appear every day? Paimon's head is spinning! Just what are these spaces anyhow? Well, consider this. For all the horrors of the Archon War, at its heart, it was just a game where a bunch of gods fought over seven seats. So no matter how strange or spooky things may look on the surface, maybe all they point to in the end is a small and simple secret. Wow, the Archon War, huh? That's an analogy and a half. The dance of Subzerus is about to begin. I'm going to go watch it. Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead, Dunyarzad? We still have some other stuff to do first. Okay then. I'll see you later. Have you figured it out yet, Traveler? Time is ticking away! Awesome! What is it? Paimon wants to know! Oh, wait, no. Let's meet up with Nahida first. You can tell us both together. This time, we're gonna get to the truth! You're back! I've been waiting forever for you two. Judging by the looks on your faces, are you ready to take your sub exam and graduate from the festival? <laughs> okay. First off, have you discovered the hidden truth? We've already experienced the sub festival many times. And... The day of the festival seems to be in a perpetual samsara. All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common. A lack of human presence. Those spaces remind me of... dreams. Like the one I had in the Avidia Forest. Except... These have no sign of human presence. People in Sumeru don't dream. What a strange phenomenon. We are all in a dream. It isn't that the people of Sumeru don't dream. 
Rather, the Akasha is taking their dreams from them. People in Sumeru think they don't dream. But the truth is, the Akasha steals their dreams without them knowing it. And those spaces with no human presence are stolen dreams without their host. That would explain why they sounded so weird when she was trying to describe them. Huh. So people in Sumeru do dream after all. In fact, we're all in one big dream together right now! Correct answer. Now, how did you conclude that the Akasha is capable of this? It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace. And it grants knowledge to the people. It is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate. Oh, okay. Those dream-controlling creatures in the forest also get their power from the Dendro Archon, right? That would explain why the Akasha has the ability to control people's dreams, too. But... Is stealing everyone's dreams really how the Akasha compiles their wisdom? Isn't there anything more to it than that? Dreams are fantastical, complex, and full of imagination. People's brains are the most active when they're dreaming. In other words, dreams are rich bundles of human wisdom. So in other words, the complete opposite of how Hypatia understood it. Parma remembers her saying that the sages think dreams are foolish delusions. And the fact that no one dreams is a blessing from Greater Lord Ruka Devada. Hmm. So it was all a dirty trick? The real story is that the sages from the Academia are using the Akasha to steal people's dreams for their own use, huh? Oh? By the sounds of it, you understand the current situation pretty well. So then, what about the Samsara? Those spaces kept disappearing before my eyes. But as soon as that beep sounded, many more spaces materialized. Those dreamscapes kept vanishing. But as soon as that beep sounded, more new spaces appeared. is keeping each person's brain in a constant dream state, but also separating their consciousness from their own dream. Their disembodied consciousness is placed inside the collective dream of the Subzerus festival along with everyone else's, while their now vacant dreams are harvested by the Akasha. No one is any the wiser as another day passes in the dream, and so begins another Samsara cycle. People wake up to yet another dream about the Subzerus festival. The dreams that belong to them are once again harvested by the Akasha. And so it continues. So, this is like a dream factory. And the Akasha is a dream harvesting machine. Did Paimon get that analogy right? <laughs> Very good, Paimon. Using analogies well is an excellent habit to get into. Okay. So that beep we keep hearing is actually from our real-life Akasha terminals. Taking off our terminals in this dream doesn't do anything. All right, last question. Who am I? They say that alchemical divination is the Dendro Archon's divine revelation. So then, if Nahida has referred to herself as the moon... Now that I think about it, wasn't illusions a hint that we're all dreaming? Hmm. Now that I think about it, wasn't illusions hinting at the sage's deception of Sumeru's people? <laughs> so you noticed. Uh, I thought that one would be the hardest question. That's why I put it last. <sighs> That wasn't hard at all! Even Paimon guessed that! Everything about you is different. 
We just didn't want to expose you, is all. Now that you mention it, Nahida, you've been hinting to us since the very beginning. It's funny. Thinking back to when we were asking all over the place for info about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Paimon didn't expect to meet you like this. Yes, those can wait until we're back in real life. On the other hand, I'd be happy to answer any more questions you have about here and now. You asked me this question before. My answer was, it would literally blow your mind. Now that you know this is all a dream, this answer should hopefully make more sense. Have you heard the saying, don't wake a sleepwalker? Likewise, if someone suddenly had told you all this instead of you learning it on your own, your notion of reality and dream would be thrown into irreversible confusion. I couldn't expose you to that kind of risk. That's why I could only give you very subtle hints and some suggestions. Long story short, I'm really sorry I had to keep you guessing. Firstly, this dream we're in is completely based on reality. People have already experienced this sub festival, so it would be very difficult for them to find anything that strikes them as surreal. Secondly, you're probably wondering why people don't have any memories from earlier samsara, right? That's because people don't remember their dreams most of the time anyway. And in any case, their actual dreams are being taken away from them by the Akasha. So whenever they wake up in this dream of the sub festival, they don't remember anything from their previous identical dream. That reminds Paimon. Traveler had a dream when we were in the Avidia Forest, but couldn't see what it was about after waking up. Is that an example of what you mean? Yes. Only after receiving the Blessing of Dendro can a person gain the Dendro Element's dream-enhancing power. That explains the feelings of deja vu. Meanwhile, Everyone else has no idea that they are in the sub Festival Samsara, while their dreams are stolen from them over and over again. Can humans really keep dreaming forever like this? Will it ever end? And if so... When? You might say your mental fatigue has already answered this question. Eventually, there's only so much that people can tolerate. Especially those whose health is compromised to begin with, like Dunyarzad. This relentless exploitation takes an even harder toll on them. People's lives are at stake here, and nobody knows a thing! We've got to put a stop to this! I know, right? Why did they have to base this dream on my birthday? Could it really just be a coincidence? Even you don't know the reason? Wow, now that's strange. The Academia Sages are determined to harvest lots of dreams in a short time, no matter the cost. They have to be up to no good. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about it. Traveler, do you have any information? Grand Sage said, go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Did he mean something more? Celebrate the birth of that god? Could it mean...? Deceiving the people of Samara with no regard for their safety. No matter what they're trying to do, this is unforgivable. After we end the sub Festival Samsara, we have to look into them. How can the sages of the Academia do this behind their Archon's back? This is ridiculous! In the end, I'm just the moon. The real sun is long gone. A sun and a moon? Uh, Nahida's talking in riddles again. Oh, we're out of time today! I'll tell you how to break free of the Samsara tomorrow. See you then.
remembers everything. Should we instead say good morning, Lesser Lord Kusanali? <sighs> hey, what's wrong, Nahida? You don't look too good. I'm afraid that what you're thinking right now is correct. Did Dunyarzad already disappear? No way! Are... Are we too late? The real Dunyarzad's consciousness has indeed disappeared. It can no longer endure the constant dream harvesting. Paimon can't believe it! Wait, so what about that other Dunyarzad? Just... What is she? Is she also going to disappear? She's actually something like a puppet, but not completely. The real Dunyarizad's consciousness could no longer keep playing her role in this dream. So another Dunyarizad appeared to replace her in the dream. Just like the grass and the trees, that Dunyarizad is just a building block of the dream that helps to keep it going. But personality-wise, she's nothing like the real Dunyarizad. Puppets are stiff, and can't copy a living person's vitality. After all, they're just there as filler. And you know, speaking of which... The old Dunyarzad might not have been too different from a puppet. Dunyarzad truly believed that she met you within her consciousness. And it was you who inspired her! So you do remember her after all! Yes. Back then... Her family was overly protective of her. No one cared about her personality or thoughts. It was as if she only lived to stall her Elazar. I just gave her a little wisdom so she could look at life in a new way. So that she could be her own person. But even so, she's still... Far from it. I'm still a long way off from being a real Archon. I couldn't even save her. If I were a competent Archon, I wouldn't have let my most faithful follower die at the Subzerus Festival with so many regrets. Please don't beat yourself up over it, Nahida. It's the Sage's fault, and theirs alone! I... I'm not beating myself up. All I did was to rationally observe the distance between myself and a real Archon. Don't be like that, Nahida! Even real Archons are still allowed to be sad! To prevent more tragedies like this, we must end the Samsara as soon as possible. Great, but how do we do that? Although the Subzerus Festival dream is under the Akasha's control, only humans can dream. Even the Akasha is unable to create them. That means this dream belongs to a host who created it. Huh? So, how should we find that person? Well, if this is someone's dream, then everything here must come from deep within their consciousness. Which means, with the power of imagination, they can change anything in this dream. Imagination? What do you mean by that? Imagination means breaking through what you perceive as normal. Like when a server at a tavern brings a plate to you, You'd naturally assume that food is on it. However, if you're the dream's host and you become aware that you're dreaming, when you imagine gold and more on the plate, the dream will respond in kind, and the server really will bring you gold and mora. But right now, our host is unaware that this is a dream. No matter how many times they're served, it will always be food. Find some way to make that person realize that they're dreaming. Usually, once that happens, the person will wake up and the dream samsara will be broken. How are we going to find them, though? If it could be anyone, it'd be like looking for a needle in a haystack! And even if we did find them, how are we supposed to make them realize they're dreaming? After all, like you said, don't wake a sleepwalker! It's extremely difficult, yes. But the only ones who can do it are you two. Remember, Everything you've achieved up to this point has all been for the sake of finding the host and ending the samsara. As for me... Uh, during this time, I'll be out of town. Out of town? Are you going to that place full of dreams where the Traveler went? Yes. I, I want to try something. There must still be a small wisp of possibility. 
Naryanko! Dreams are supposed to be fantastical, romantic, and full of pleasant surprises. Unnecessary things like this samsara need to end. Oh. Paimon's still a little upset that we've come this far only for Dunyarzad to... She was such a good person, with such a simple wish. But fate was against her. Yeah. Saving Dunyarzad is what kept us going this whole time. But we mustn't lose hope, Traveler. Dunyarzad would definitely want to see us save everyone else. So let's break the Samsara for her sake. Paimon's wondering, do you think the sages would get one of their own to be the host of this dream? Feels like it would be easier to control it that way, no? Huh. That's true. Plus, the sages probably weren't counting on there being other factors beyond their control. Like Nahida and us. So, who do you think the host of the dream is? Oh, that would make sense. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is a symbol of the wholesome Zerus Festival, right? Pretty core character. Let's go ask him some questions, shall we? Hmm, you're back. You left in a hurry last time. I is everything okay? Everything's fine, just... Um... It's a little hard to explain. Uh... Would you mind taking part in a little experiment with us? An experiment? That came out of nowhere. I'm listening, though. What do you need me to do? Could you... make a wish? You want me to make a wish? Is that a new sub Zerus festival tradition or something? Less questions, more wishing! Okay. Okay. My wish. My wish. Um, okay. I'm a little nervous saying this out loud, but I want Miss Dunyarzad to be happy. Oh. I noticed earlier that she looked a bit down, and she wasn't really talking to anyone. She just doesn't seem like herself. She's always so gentle and kind, and all the kids love her. I've also wondered if the reason she asked me to be Ferris Knight of Flowers is because I'm special to her, or something. So, you have a crush on Dunyarzad? Uh, <laughs> oh, is it that obvious? After what I just said, I guess it is. When she placed the hat of the Knight of Flowers onto my head, she said to me, I want everyone to have a happy sub -Zerus festival. What she didn't realize was that I'm not that interested in how everyone else feels. In that moment, I just wanted to be her knight of flowers for the rest of my life. Fifty years? A hundred years? I'll serve her till the end of time. Okay, yeah, that was a bit much. Felt like the right moment to get it off my chest, but... <clears throat> that was pretty embarrassing. Okay. I'm ready to make my wish. I would like Miss Dunyarzad to appear in front of me right now with a smile on her face. Here goes. Please come true. I'm gonna open my eyes. Oh. Uh. Oh! You're... What? Fucky? Uh, sorry, but only one portion of Yelda candies per person. Back home you go. <laughs> uh, nice try, you two. Anyway, never mind. I don't need to see her appear right in front of me. As long as she's happy. <laughs> uh, guess he isn't the host of this dream after all. Should have expected it wouldn't be this easy. Dunyarzad loves her, but none of them has any idea that she... My lady, step back. That sounds like Tia! Oh, right. This is when Dunyarzad bumps into the kidnappers. Huh? But Tia can handle them. Hey, Traveler!
Oh, it's you. Great timing. Please take... Hey, this is my job. The homie Yanni's pay me, not you. You... Ugh, fine, all right. Knock yourself out. Why are you so worked up anyway? It's not like I don't trust your fighting skills. Anyway, watch yourself. So you got yourself some backup. <laughs> Suit yourself. You're going down! Hold the line! Brace yourself! Think you can get away? <laughs> Propagate! That's close All enough! Orders. For takeoff. Rest and rebuild. Propagate. Uh, My apologies. Uh. Traveler, were you just taking your anger out on those guys? Uh, you and Nahida both. Dinyarzad wouldn't want to see you two like this. Oh, and speaking of her. Paimon just remembered something. Remember how during the first Sub-Zero's festival, before the Samsara started, we came here with Dunyarzad because she wanted to pick something up? She said it was because she had forgotten something. Okay, so Paimon's memory is working so far. Anyway, Paimon also remembers that she is staying somewhere around here. She pointed it out to us the night before the Sub-Zero's festival. Yeah. Even if it's only a tiny clue, it'll probably still help us more than this needle in a haystack search. This is the place! It's rude to enter other people's spaces without permission, but desperate times call for desperate measures! Hey! The windows are unlocked! Okay. Uh, Paimon's gonna take a peek inside. temporary residence, so there was pretty much nothing inside except this book on the table. Should we open it? Dunyarzad wrote all of this. Sounds like she was always thinking of us even while we were away. Even though she was also busy preparing for the sub festival and had all her health problems to worry about. She must have wanted to give this to us as a gift on the day of the sub festival, right? If we hadn't found this book, we never would have known. But now that we know, we can't even thank her.
Paimon still remembers when we were sitting here. And the way her eyes sparkled when she talked about Milu's dance of Subzeru's. There will always be frustrations in life. But I know that the point of living is not to leave behind any regrets. That was what the real Dunyarzad said, wasn't it? Does that mean... Yes, Traveler. What is it? Oh. So she's still just a puppet. But just now, how come... What? Where are we going this time? If you continue to resist, we will have to order an investigation into every single event organizer. The Grand Sage has already granted you much leniency. I advise that you exercise tact. How? Oh. How did things turn out like this? Uh, traveler? Uh, you don't have to get involved. He's a sage from the Academia. I don't want to drag you into this. Traveler? Traveler? What the heck are you doing? If you get arrested by the Academia, that's another day gone to waste! Wait! They're not reacting! Have they been scared stiff? Oh, of course! If this is the Sage's plan, they wouldn't put themselves through this! So they're just substitutes! What is this? What happened to the Grand Sage and his entourage? <laughs> like I said, they symbolize the Goddess of Flowers. It's just a shame that all the real Bodhisaras went extinct after her death. Yes. The Greater Lord brought forth new Bodhisaras in memory of the Goddess of Flowers. But she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful shade of purple. Ah, uh, that beautiful shade of purple. Aren't these flowers real Padisaras? Just like the ones from the legend? I didn't even notice. Tanyarzad, did you find these? But didn't you just say all the real flowers went extinct after the goddess of flowers passed away? So, how? Yeah. What's going on here? Uh, huh? You guys are acting weird. But okay, I'll try. Hmm. told us. People assumed there will be food on a plate, and Nilu assumed there would be real Padisaras in the flower pots. So when you saw the flowers, you instantly knew it was Nilu? But if we want to end the samsara, we need the host to become aware that they're dreaming. How should we make Nilu realize that? Am I dreaming? Huh? <laughs> So I'm right. Is this Lesser Lord Kusanali responding to our celebration of the Sabzeru's festival? Wrong guess, but you aren't completely wrong either. Uh, the point is, what made you think this is a dream? As far as you know, people in Sumeru don't dream, right? Yeah, but have you heard the tale of the first sage? To prevent a calamity, he went on a journey to find the Dendro Archon. Ooh, sounds familiar. Dunyarzad told us a story like that when we first arrived in Sumeru City. 
So it was about the first sage, huh? Yep. But in the part you heard, he hadn't become the first sage yet. There's more to the story. His piety and wisdom were acknowledged by the Dendro Archon, and she finally gave her blessing to him. All kinds of spectacular scenes appeared in front of the first sage, as if all the knowledge in the world was being painted onto a canvas right before him. He was captivated. After who knows how long, he mastered all the knowledge he could comprehend. Afterward, he said to the Dendro Archon, I miss my parents, my wife, and my children. I've been away from home for far too long. They must be worried. The Dendro Archon smiled. The next second, the sage found himself lying in his bed, as if he had just woken up from a dream. His wife lying next to him said, You're off to search for the Dendro Archon today, aren't you? Have a safe journey, my love. In the end, the first sage took care of many disasters in Sumeru City and founded the Academia. <sighs> what a happy ending. So, the first sage was dreaming ever since the beginning of the story? He never went on his journey? Yes. But his faith and determination were conveyed to the Dendro Archon, so she blessed him in the form of a dream. Paimon understands where you're coming from now. That's a really interesting connection. But we really gotta wake up soon, like the sage in the story! I see. Well, it just so happens that today's Sub-Zero's festival is almost over, too. Since we're in a dream, let's make this final dance of Sub-Zero's as beautiful as we can. Dedicate this to our god, the dance of sub -Zerus. I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets. I would have loved to see Nilo's dance. She's 
not in her room. What happened? Huh? What usual spot? <sighs> well done, Traveler and Paimon. And thank you, Dunyarzad, for organizing the Subsairs Festival for me. I'm sorry, who are... Oh, a traveler, Paimon. I have something amazing to tell you. I just had a dream, and I saw Nilu performing the dance of Subzerus. You're actually Nahida, aren't you? Catherine was acting weird when we met at the Subzerus Festival. And... Dunyarzad, did you save her? It's a really long story. We shouldn't disturb her. Her consciousness is still weakened. Let's chat somewhere else. Hmm... How about by the Traveler's favorite bench? What's going on? Why are you two so excited to see me? <laughs> Hasn't it only been a night? It's actually been much longer than that. Oh? Strange. Was I really asleep that long? No wonder I have such a headache. Dunyarzad first. It's such a relief that she's all right. Mm hmm After we parted on the last day of the Subzerus Festival, I left the city and saw what the Traveler had described. Among the countless dreams, I found one that was growing fainter and fainter. This proved my suspicion. Once Dunyarzad could no longer bear the Akasha harvesting her dreams, her consciousness began to dissipate. But this also meant it escaped the Akasha's control. Such a small fragment of consciousness can't last for very long, though. It will return to its original dream, where both will gradually fade until they completely disappear. I used all the power I had to keep her dying dream alive as long as possible, but it still wouldn't have lasted for much longer if it hadn't been for you two breaking the samsara. So it looks like we did manage to save Dunyarzad in the end! Not a moment too soon! Huh? Why are you two smiling so happily? I thought you'd be so moved that you'd start crying. Hmm. I need to spend more time observing human emotions. Both are fine. Everyone reacts differently. Alright. You two must have a lot of other questions for me, right? After all, you saved my faithful believer. As your reward, I will answer any and all questions. At the Avidia Forest, there was this incense that made the Traveler fall unconscious and dream of a huge tree and a red sky. You also heard someone's voice, right? It said World and Forget Me. Yeah, so you do know! We've been wanting to ask you what that was about and if the red sky was related to Conria. Hmm. It seems like the Traveler established a connection to Erminsoul. That was a message left by Greater Lord Rukadavata's residual consciousness in Erminsoul. Perhaps her last memory before she died. As you two probably know, Greater Lord Rukadavata disappeared after the disaster in Conria. The timings of these events do line up, so your suspicions are reasonable. A message from Greater Lord Rukadavata? We thought it was from the Scarlet King! The Scarlet King? That god who died even longer ago? Uh, some present-day desert dwellers still worship him. You probably just heard some of their conspiracies. Okay, so what does the message mean? <sighs> I still haven't managed to decipher it. Even the Akasha isn't currently capable of doing that. 
Creator Lord Ruka Devata's residual consciousness in Ermin Soul seems to be contaminated with something that has a very dangerous aura to it. Many devoted scholars go mad as soon as they connect their consciousness. I've warned the Academia about this many times, but people still keep falling victim to it. But I believe this is the key to saving Ermin Soul. That's why I've kept trying to decipher it. So the tree in the vision was Ermin Soul? Oh, Tainari also said that Ermin Soul is sick! Is it because of the contaminated consciousness? But even if you can't figure out what that vision was all about, it seems like our search for you was all in vain. The Traveler wasn't affected after coming in contact with that consciousness. I've never seen anyone like that. With you here, we may have a chance at deciphering it. No, we must decipher its secrets. I've already eliminated all other factors that might affect Soul. This is the only one left. This puzzle has life and death at stake. It could determine Soul's fate, as well as Tavat's. To be accurate, I'm using the Akasha as a medium to occupy Catherine's consciousness. Uh, how did you do that? Poor Catherine. Uh, does this mean you can also occupy other people's consciousnesses? Theoretically, I can enter anyone's mind as long as they're wearing their Akasha terminal. The Akasha is the legacy of Greater Lord Ruga Devata. As Lesser Lord Kusanali and the first Akasha terminal, my consciousness has always been linked to the Akasha. I've always respected my people's free will, so I've never actually occupied their consciousness. When necessary, I just borrow this bionic Snishnayan puppet. Uh... Oh, hold on! Did we just learn some deep dark secret? So Catherine is... No... Wonder Paimon felt something was off about her. What about your own body? Why do you need to borrow other people's? Don't you live in the sanctuary of Suristana? That story begins a long time ago. After Greater Lord Ruka Devata disappeared, the sages found my newly born self and took me back to Sumeru. At that time, I was young and weak. The sages kept me in the sanctuary of Suristana, ostensibly for the sake of protecting me. But I've hardly heard from them since. However, I do understand that they had hoped to find Greater Lord Ruka Devata instead of me, a symbol of her passing. So, the sages basically put their new Archon under house arrest? How dare they! Why don't you teach them a lesson, Nahida? In some ways, they aren't wrong. Greater Lord Ruka Devata was omniscient and omnipotent. Even after her death, the Akasha is still empowering this nation. And I... I'm still really far away from being able to call myself the God of Wisdom. Moreover, the Academia is also more proficient at governing this country. My existence has little meaning. Yeah, you got a lot of believers. Just look at the Subzeros Festival. Everyone who showed up truly loves you. <laughs> Thank you for the kind words. But I honestly don't need physical freedom as long as I can connect my consciousness to the Akasha. Trying to find a way to save Ermansoul is my life's mission and top priority. I will work on that and try to live up to being a deity in the meantime. Every once in a while, I will also take up the duties of the God of Wisdom and enlighten a lost soul here and there. Doing all that should be enough. There's never been any big problems with the Academia's governance of Sumeru. This is the first time I've seen them step out of line. I wonder what caused them to go down this path, and what they hope to achieve. Even though the city's residents haven't noticed anything strange, if the Traveler hadn't broken the Subzeru Samsara, the situation could have become dire. I tried to do some investigating in the Akasha, but I couldn't find anything suspicious. And all the people of interest seem to purposely avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. I think they're deliberately trying to hide something. Oh, that reminds Paimon. In Gundarvaville, there was a sage who had invited Tainari to join some kind of project. Could it be related? Regardless, 
I need to first investigate the sage's motives, make things right, and punish them if needed. But I'll have to be discreet, or they'll see me coming. You mean how the Akasha stops you from having dreams? Yeah, it's been such a long time! No one's noticed something's up? It's not that no one noticed. It's more like no one cared. Ultimately, it's all rooted in the Sage's misdirection. Misdirection? The Sage has convinced everyone to believe that being unable to dream is a sign of rationality and wisdom. Not dreaming is a badge of honor in Sumeru. Even if the truth is that their dreams are being reaped by the Akasha. With their propaganda in place, the Sages can maximize their use of the Akasha to facilitate their research. Besides, Greater Lord Ruka Devata must have created the Akasha in the hopes that it could be used to its full potential. That's why I've never come out strongly against this. <sighs> anyway, the perspective advocated by the Sages drowned out any voices of doubt. By now, even those who never use Akasha terminals find it too shameful and embarrassing to talk about their dreams. Got it! I hope my answers were satisfactory, seekers of knowledge. <sighs> to be honest, maintaining Dunyarzad's fading dream took a lot of mental energy. I think I may need to rest for a while. Oh, and you don't need to worry too much about the Sage's activities for now. The Akasha won't be able to conduct another project, on the scale of the Subzeru Samsara, in the immediate future. Go and get some sleep. Leave everything to us. <laughs> what a relief. <sighs> this is truly the most exhausting birthday I've ever had. Hmm? Traveler? Paimon? Why am I here? Do either of you know? I... Uh, maybe you were sleepwalking. You know you can't wake up a sleepwalker. We, uh... We happened to walk by, so we thought we'd wait for you to wake up. I see. Huh. I should visit my maintenance personnel sometime. Oh, I'm fine. I better go. Thank you. <laughs>